Um, hello, everybody. This is Dr. Clare speaking from Dr. Clare's Apothecary in Galway on the west of Ireland. And uh, what we're going to have a chat about tonight is um, uh, uh, lung and chest herbs. So this is very topical at this time of the year. And I think it's been a particularly nasty um, uh, winter for all of these chest conditions, never mind COVID. I don't know why my chair won't move. But... Okay, so I don't, I, I'm, as many of you know, but not all of you know, I'm a practicing clinical herbalist. My background is in general practice. I trained in University College Dublin a long time ago, it has to be said. I was at a GP in London for nearly 10 years, did various other um, medical um, posts and training um, um, and spe specializations and eventually qualified after doing a degree in the Middlesex University in clinical herbal medicine. And thanks to my patients, I learned to be patient and um, to listen to how effective the herbs were for them, um, despite my skepticism. Um, and I then went on to um, uh, set up a practice, uh, came home from London to Galway and set up a practice here, which has been thriving ever since. As part of that, um, for for a long time, we we didn't have any blends of herbs, you know, available for the public. But people would come in, and they wouldn't ask for some tussilago or colt's foot, and they wouldn't ask for um, motherworth or leonoris. They'd come in and say that they were having palpitations, or and that the doctor had said that it was fine. Um, but they were still uncomfortable, or they were having recurring bronchitis and ending up on on antibiotics. And did we have anything that we can recommend? And uh, one of my patients came in with, um, so I made up blends for the, the, my staff who were herbal medicine dispensing assistants, but they weren't qualified herbalists. So I made up blends that would have been used for thousands of years, nothing very clever, um, except that the herbs are very clever. Um, it wasn't me being clever. So they, they were available behind the counter to people who gradually, the word of mouth spread. And uh, somebody who found them very useful said, oh, they should be out, you know, where people can see them with, with a label on and whatever. I said, yes, I must do that. And eventually she came in with a floppy disk. <laughs> That'll tell you the exact year. I think it was about 1985. And they've been available ever since. So what I'm going to do, I'm not selling product here. What I've done is I've gone through, I have a whole range of bottles here. What on we see? We have... Uh, Covitone, which is particularly good for viral illnesses. Um, congestion, particularly good for those who have difficulty breathing. We have Mucotone, which is good for the um, uh, chesty coughs that people get on a, on a regular basis and end up on antibiotics. And Imitone, which is when you're run down for any reason, you're exhausted, you've been giving, um, traveling the, the, the countryside, you've been um, traveling abroad, You've been doing presentations, you've been teaching, coming to the end of the term, you've had a flu and your immune system is still a bit low, you've got freezing cold in the airport and you know that if you don't do something, you're going to come down with a, 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 some kind of infection, or you know the conditions within which you're likely to get cystitis or, or a sore throat. So that's what the image tone is for. Um, and we then have various loose teas, which I've had on the shelves for 20 years, and people always had good intentions, but they never took them. So then we devised three teaspoon pouches or sachets where people could use the uh, a, 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 a helpful amount of herbs on a regular basis with very little effort, um, which also worked out as less expensive than the tinctures, especially for ongoing problems. So we have three different kinds of those. But I'm, I'm not interested. I'm interested in helping you to help yourself. So what I did was I wrote down all the herbs that I use in these blends. And these these, these aren't my... In, in bed. The, if I went to a herbal fair in Sarajevo, which I went, which I did a few years ago, um, in their herb market, which we don't have in Ireland anymore, um, thriving herb market. People know what they're looking for. Um, they they were behind the Iron Curtain, so they didn't have a massive influx of pharmaceutical 
um, convenience um, of, of uh, isolate constituents, often of, of plants. Um, so if I had these on a, a table stall, they would fit in beautifully with all of the others because these are herbs that have been used for many, many hundreds of years, many of them local to northern um, Europe um, uh, and also to um, uh, America because of the colonies. There was a lot of trade between North America and um, the UK in particular. So there's a lot of shared experience and a lot of shared history. So what I did was I, I got the, the um, ingredients of all of these and I made them into lists. And then I put down what were the actions that you would like, that I would like, if we were feeling chesty, congested, um, had sinuses, chest infections, all of those things. And then I'll go into some practical things that you can do. And if somebody will remind me at the end, I'll talk about um, um, children as well. So of all of the, 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 I took the tinctures and the tea blends mainly in particular. Um, and uh, I, I, I made a list of the, the herbs. And then I put how many times they were in all of these different products. So ginger was used. And then I prioritized them in terms of how many. At least I think I did. Maybe I didn't get that far. Um, yeah, the ones that have multiples. So ginger and thyme. Ginger is the, the, the top, <laughs> is the one that's in three of, of these formulae. Okay. So it's a very universal, whether you're talking about uh, uh, chesty cough, sinuses, sore throat. And that's understandable because it takes up a very small amount of, of, of space, whether it's a tincture or a tea, and it gives a nice warming, promoting sweating, um, settling the digestion. Um, uh, so a, a very gentle background warming circulatory effect, uh, which promotes all of the actions of all the other herbs. So the wider you can get the herbs dispensed into the periphery of all of the different organs, then the better that they will be effective. And the second one on my list is closer to home, and that's time. And time is, um, is, is again, like universally helpful, primarily as an antimicrobial. Um, but it also has a nervine settling effect and helps promote sleep, funnily enough. Um, it took me a long time to really trust that effect. I'd seen it written down in several places. But um, it's particularly good when you're coughing all night and you can't get sleep and you're getting exhausted. Um, and particularly good when you've recovered from an infection. It, it keeps the microbes at bay, but it also helps with that irritating cough that prevents you sleeping. Uh, elderflowers were in two of my for the formulae here, and elderberries in one. So we'll talk about those a bit later. Um, mallow root was in one, and mallow leaf in another. Um, and then one of my all-time favorite heroes of European medicine, um, is uh, ribwort or plantago. Um, there's a very nice book written about the science of the herbs that were used by the druids that are written down. Um, what is written down about the druids, um, mainly coming from the midfi in Wales, um, uh, where it persisted for the longest and overlapped with a written history. Um, so, and of all of the, or the herbs, the primary herbs used by the Druids are still herbs that I use day in, day out on a regular basis. And my one of the ones that I use most, along with dandelion root, is ribwort. And all of you pass it by every day. Check it out. It's Plantago lanceolata or Plantago majora. Um, and once you see the, 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 um, the picture of it, you'll go, oh my God, that's so useful as a medicinal herb. And it's just everywhere. Even in cities, you'll find it um, under trees or, you know, amidst the grass, long grass on the edges of things. Um, so Plantago, Icelandic moss, um, yarrow, yarrow uh, two of the Icelandic moss, two of the yarrow. Um, again, a very common um, meadow herb, uh, edge of the hedgerows. Um, very nice. You're all familiar with it. Uh, cat's claw going a little bit further abroad uh, in two of the formulae, licorice in two of the formulae, and then ones where they're 
sparse in, in between, um, not quite so frequently. So we have ginseng. Ginseng is a powerful herb. It's um, uh, adaptive and uh, very good for mobilizing your resources for an acute illness. Um, uh, it, it, it brings all of your stamina reserves to, to bear and resilience. Um, Siberian ginseng, uh, very different entirely from ginseng, a different family, um, an adaptogen to help you cope. Oregano, um, which or marjoram, is, you might be familiar with it in your herb garden, um, another antimicrobial herb. Uh, garlic, um, bayberry or myrica, peppermint, skullcap, lavender and chamomile. Um, so these are used depending on, on the, 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 the different formulae. So there's a list of herbs for you and a little bit about which ones get me very enthusiastic. Um, so now we'll, we'll, we'll approach it from the point of view of if you have a sore throat, a chest infection or sinuses, um, a rundown immune system, which means that whatever you're getting, you're getting your, in, in your chest, you're getting it recurrently. Um, and what might be what you might want to think about in in order to get better. Um, so uh, it, it, it's uh, so we'll go through the different actions. So the first thing you want is something that will kill off the bugs. The second thing is something that will help you to cough up the phlegm. Um, the third one is a demulcent, which is a mucilaginous. Right, mucilage is, you know the way porridge is gloopy, right? That gloopy factor, which is soothing and coating. So that's a demulsion. Immune modulation, you know, your immune system might be exhausted um, from stress um, is the commonest thing. Just busyness, um, electric lights, you know, not going to bed until one o'clock in the morning, having too much to do in the hours in between and never getting uh, much time to, to kind of check out um, and, and re, re, recoup some of your energy. Um, mucous membrane restorative or decongestant. Well, that makes sense, isn't it? Because it's the mucous membranes starting in your nose, going through the nasopharynx, all the way down to your bronchi. It's the same mucous membrane that continues into your digestive system. So it's, it's shared mouth into the esophagus um, uh, instead of down to the bronchi, but this part here is all shared. Um, gums um, as well. Um, so, and then anti-inflammatory, because obviously you, uh, uh, once you've got an infection, it, it creates inflammation in the body. Um, and it, you also get a lot of breakdown products, um, which then stimulate an inflammatory response because they're foreign. Um, Antispasmodic, I mean, especially for things like whooping cough, um, but a lot of coughs, especially towards the end, and, and as it's recovering, you get a lot of spasmodic um, element to the cough. And then nervines, right? Nervines are um, a support for the nervous system. It's very stressful being sick. Usually or often one is stressed before one gets sick. And that, that's the, one of the warning factors. Um, and uh, the being sick can affect your sleep. You know, it can cause very poor sleep. Um, and in recovery afterwards. So nervines are, I, I would say, a key factor. Um, adrenal support, um, again, this is often, if you have 100 people in an office and flu, any kind of flu, including COVID, not everybody in the office gets it. Most of us have experienced COVID um, and many of us have had no, no symptoms at all. Some have had very minor symptoms, as you know, some have had very serious symptoms, um, but that's the nature of any viral infection. Um, why do the ones who come, come down? Well, we know some of the predisposing factors, um, but even in a healthy group of people, you know, who would be office age, not have other morbidities. Um, so they, they, they would require adrenal support. So that would be nervines, circulatory herbs, digestive herbs. There's a big overlap between poor digestion. Um, for people who take PPIs, the protein pump inhibitors for a hyperacid stomach, or to protect the mucous membrane in the stomach. Um, if you remove the stomach acid with Nexiums, proteums, um, uh, any of those um, is all uh, acid suppressing um, drugs, then there's a higher incidence of community acquired uh, chest infections. Um, if you ask any herbalist what are their favorite 
drugs to not like. <laughs> uh, protein pump inhibitors would be one of the top ones on the list. Um, and especially because there are uh, very good natural ways of dealing with reflux, hiatus, hernia, indigestion, all of the things that would be, be covered, um, including some of these actions like the decongestants. And then we have anti-allergy um, herbs, uh, which would be chamomile, uh, well, I'll, I'll come on to the different individual ones. Um, when, when you read uh, medical books, it often you know, describes that's a chest infection and that's asthma, right? But it can sometimes be very hard to, to um, figure out when one goes into another, especially with a nighttime cough um, and especially in the middle of the hay fever season. Um, so uh, there's, there's a, a, a background kind of anti-allergy, um, usually aligned with other, other features, right? So you'll get demulsants, you'll get things that are strengthening, you'll get chamomile, which is also a nervine and also good for the digestion, but also good for allergy. So there'll be kind of like secondary effects of the herbs, but there can certainly in, in, in everyday practice, there's uh, quite a lot of overlap between allergies and um, infectious um, uh, uh, conditions. Okay. So if we go back to this list of actions, um, th there's, a, there's, a, there's a huge amount of um, research for some of these herbal um, effects, um, not so much for others. Um, whether the research is done, does it make the herbs work better or worse? No, it just means that we have more information from a different, a, a different paradigm. So the current paradigm is, the current cosmology is, is science. And if something is proven by science, then it's real and it has that effect. If it hasn't been proven by science, it's usually because nobody has had the uh, funds or inclination or manufacturing power to monetize the science. Um, so therefore, it's 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 just um, uh, in 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 a corner, right? It's it, it's not that it doesn't work. It's just that it's not being scrutinized in that particular system. Um, but some of the herbs have been, and there is uh, evidence for for benefit. Uh, very little evidence of harm. Um, uh, it's very important that you, if you're using herbs, that you report to wherever you're purchasing them, that you're whether you're on any medication, particularly blood thinners, particularly if your doctor or your pharmacist advises that you are taking any drugs that have a narrow therapeutic index. So if you're on a medication or several medications and you want to use natural medicines of ever, any kind, please ask your pharmacist are these medications in a category of narrow therapeutic index? And it's a very specific question and they'll be able to give you a very immediate answer um, because they're, they're um, drugs that uh, um, other, if, if, they're, if, if the herbs have actions, the actions might influence the metabolism of the drug, okay? So that's the reason why. Um, and then ask for relevant advice if you do want to use anything. Um, you can still use a lot of natural medicines, but you might need very specific advice. Okay, um, so uh, of, of these, um, you'll see as well, if I go through the different um, uh, groupings, the antimicrobial herbs are garlic, thyme, oregano, uh, elderberries and elderflowers. Elderberries have more, nearly all of the research has been done on elderberries for benefit with viral illness, and there's quite significant um, evidence of benefit um, and none of harm. All right, and the elderberries are also nutritious in the same way that blueberries are nutritious. Right? I don't know whether you're familiar with them. The the berries on the elder tree in the autumn in Ireland, you can go and pick them. You don't eat them by the handful, they'll give you diarrhea, but you use small amounts medicinally. They'll give you a grapey tummy. Um, like traditionally, they wouldn't be used as um, any more than um, a, a three or four a day for particular nu nutrients or to prevent viral illnesses, but they wouldn't be used like in the same way that blackberries would be or um, uh, gooseberries or any of those. Um, so elderberries and elderflowers um, 
Uh, cat's claw is a very immune um, supportive and antimicrobial. Yarrow is antimicrobial. The ribwort is antimicrobial and the chamomile. So you'll see these coming out. Also, they're not in these blends because they're not available for over the counter, um, is Inula or Elecampane. So there are herbs that I haven't put in here because they're, they're, um, they wouldn't count as a food supplement. Um, so the Inula um, would be one of those herbs and very tonic and nourishing for the, the lungs. Then expectorant herbs, you'll begin to see the familiar faces, garlic, plantain, elder, mallow. And mallow leaf is very good if there's a lot of phlegm, uh, loose phlegm coming up from the upper respiratory in, in, and, and then mallow root if somebody has dry, sticky phlegm that they can't get up. So usually older people um, who are prone to recurring infections, they would do very, very well on mallow root. Um, and you can use mallow root in, in a powder. You can take mallow root powder um, a teaspoon every day, a teaspoon twice a day, also good for the bowels, um, but very good for loosening and coating the any digestive uh, heartburn or reflux, also very good for that, and good for the, um, uh, as a probiotic, or like a prebiotic as well, a very soft fibre for the stool. So I'm a, uh, uh, I find the mallow root very, very good. Um, and then you have uh, herbs that promote sweating. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think what's the best way. The antimicrobial is very clear and straightforward. Um, it could be particularly good for um, bacteria or viruses or have a general antimicrobial effect. So um, all, all of those herbs are very straightforward. The expectorant, um, I mentioned with the expectorant, that is in herbal medicine practice, it's very, very rare that you will treat a cough by suppressing the cough. And when I say it to people why they go, oh gosh, that makes sense. Because the cough is there to eliminate. Okay, first thing I say is your nose is there to eliminate, it's to filter. So the, it, it's quite important to train yourself to breathe through the nose. And um, because that's a filter for the air, for bugs, it's the first port of call for your immune system to do with your lungs. All right. So as much as possible, address mouth breathing. Um, and the uh, the cough, if you if the bug gets past all of your defenses to do with your mucous membranes and it gets into the chest and then it gets into the bloodstream, that's when you're really in trouble, guys. Um, but what you want to do is while it's only got as far as your chest, you want to cough it up. You don't want to suppress a cough because if you imagine you get inflamed mucus um, plugs um, and uh, and pus, what you want to do is to cough that out. I know it sounds terrible. I know it feels terrible. But in the long term, that's the, the best thing that you can do is to actually cough it out. So I, I, I promote coughing. <laughs> um, you, you end up um, sick enough to realize you need to be in bed, but that's the right place for you. Um, and you you get sick and you recover more quickly is my experience, extensive experience with this. Um, similarly, I don't suppress a fever. No, no herbalist. Uh, uh, I, I've never known a toxic fever. That's what you would get when you're sick enough to be in ICU. OK, um, in the community for people who are unwell to sick. You, the, the fever is generally manageable. I, I don't advise people to take paracetamol or neurofen because they have toxic side effects. Very well known. I'm not making that up. Um, if they're in a lot of pain, um, I, that is a reason to take paracetamol firstly and, and neurofen if you must. Um, but not for fever. Fever is there to kill bugs. Okay, that's why the blood is heated. You heat the blood in order to discourage um, the, the blood, the, the, the um, bugs from taking hold, hold. So in looking after yourself, um, if you're sick enough to be thinking, my gosh, I need to go to the doctor and get an antibiotic, you need to be sick enough to be in bed, right? Walking around on a course of antibiotics is, it, it just doesn't sit right, okay? So for somebody to be sick enough to need antibiotic, they need to be sick enough to go to bed, okay? 
bed is the first treatment for a severe flare-up of, of, of sinusitis or a chest infection or bronchitis. Um, uh, and lots of fluids, just in case I forget to mention it. So along with drinking lots of fluids, you also promote sweating because that's the body's natural way of making sure your fever doesn't get too high. Um, so you promote now you you vaporize the sweat and that that gives a, a, a nice balance of benefit from the the fever um, to the the body sweating out the body with the sweat also sweats out toxins and when you have an infection the infection itself the bacteria and the viruses create all of these chemicals that need to be got rid of so you want to promote elimination in every way including sweating. OK, so you're in bed, you're sweating and you're coughing. And that's exactly where you should be if you're sick enough um, and you take the herbs to promote all of that. OK, um, the demulsant is soothing. So I will do something nice for you as well. So it's it's soothing. You know, that any of those raspy coughs um, uh, and it also soothes the digestion at the same time. There's a reflex connection between the digestion and the lungs. Um, and uh, we, it, it's not got to do with the nerve supply because that's that's different. They're, they're actually served by two different plexuses. But they, they, what they do have in common is the vagus nerve, which is the, the digestion, which also affects the heart rate um, and the expression of the face and um, a lot of the autonomic um, re relax, the, the opposite of the sympathetic tone. So um, it, it may be via the, the vagus nerve or it may be some kind of tissue reflex that we don't understand because they do come from the same um, germ la layer. So it, we, we don't know if there's a fascia connection or any other kind of reflex, reflex connection. Um, there's two things that the, the current medical model pays very little attention to, and that's the fascia, which surrounds every muscle bundle um, muscle um, group, uh, every layer of tissue, it segments and, and compartmentalizes where necessary. Otherwise, all the tissues would all merge into each other. Um, and it means that they can move and flow between all the different layers. Um, and the other is the lymph. So the one of the other things to do is to um, make sure that one of the reasons for moving in order to keep your immune system healthy is to stimulate the lymph and, and, and the, uh, moving the muscle uh, in the calves is the main way that the lymph actually feeds back through a valve system back into the cardiovascular circulation. And people don't often realize that about movement. Um, so moving is, is, is very important. Okay, um, so... Uh, I think I was going through the different herbs, the diaphoretic, the principles. So soothe the gut, soothe the mucous membranes, sweat the body, cough the cough, um, and kill the bugs. All right. So we're, we're doing, they're, they're all things that you'd like to do when you've got a chesty infection or a sinus infection. Um, I'll, I'll cover sinuses a little bit more specifically. So the demulcent herbs are mallow, um, root and tea, okay, tincture or powder, Icelandic moss, which as you can imagine is very um, soothing, the ribwort again, the, the ribwort goes ace, 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 also slippery elm. Um, so this is, I use the mallow powder now instead of the slippery elm, but you may read herb books and you may be familiar with using slippery elm. I've changed to the mallow because slippery elm is the powdered bark of an elm tree. And they, they're, it's being over harvested since it's got so popular as a natural medicine. It's being over harvested and it takes a long time for um, a slippery elm tree to grow and for it to recover from harvesting some of the bark. So mullein is a perennial plant um, and the roots are, are, are powdered. And I really have got I can't I can't find any difference in. The feedback that I get from patients um, in, in terms of using the mallow powder. So I'm very happy to promote the use of that. Um, it, I think there's been some research recently um, that patients have been referring to about verbascum 
or mullein leaf because um, I've noticed, we've noticed that people are coming in and asking about it. Again, um, very, we use the fixed oil for ear infections um, or, or people who have very strong wax that they find hard to, to eliminate. Um, but the, the leaf is uh, one of those very soft, silvery down um, and again, demulcent and soothing. So very, very nice. Um, in Ireland here, we also have a very strong tradition of using two herbs. One of them is nettles and the other is carrageen moss. And carrageen moss is, is boiled. It's used to set jellies um, and it's used with uh, any other flavoring herbs. Um, like hyssop would be one. Um, and it's also used in a blancmange, um, which is like a milky jelly. Um, and it can be flavored with strawberries or anything, anything that you want to flavor it with. Um, and that remains very popular in Ireland. It's a seaweed. Um, so uh, we then would also like to do the immune modulation, which is the echinacea, um, especially for recurrent infections. Um, uh, Echinacea is something that I use in a high dose when I get an uh oh moment. I'll explain what that is in a minute. Um, and then I would use uh, five mils three times a day, no problem. It, it's it's um, uh, early, early, early. So I'll explain that. Uh, cat's claw, again, um, quite good, good research on the um, modulation of the immune system with cat's claw and also elder flowers. Um, the elderflowers is also um, nervine. Okay. So mucous membrane restorative or decongestant is the plantago and elderflower. These are on our doorsteps, guys. We can all harvest these. These are brilliant. Um, yarrow, on our doorstep, we can all, all um, uh, harvest them. Uh, bayberry um, is myrica, uh, serifera. And it's a particularly, it's one of the myrtle groups, which again, is <clears throat> very soothing for the mucous membranes. Um, I find it good for very stubborn sinus um, problems and um, for decongestant um, and mucous membrane um, uh, helper. Uh, peppermint. Now, if any of you drink peppermint tea, and again, if any of you have a garden, peppermint will look after itself. Um, you, you best to do it in a, in a if you have a, a, a flower bed, that has a good bit of space, um, moist. Uh, all the mints like to live near water. They like wet feet. Um, uh, and it'll just fill the space. Um, I haven't found that it really overgrows into the grass um, if you've got a firm edge to the to the flower bed. Um, I've tried planting it in buckets and then planting the bucket, and it just goes over the lip of the bucket out into the soil. So it's one of those things where I'm kind of going, gardening books really don't, you know, don't fit in with how plants behave for me. But there you go. Um, uh, or you can just plant it in a big tub. Now, not a little tub. It won't like that at all. And I put a whole load of seaweed in the bottom um, because it acts as a, holds on to moisture, but you can get all kinds of, beads in the in the garden centers or whatever but you don't want it to dry out so you, you you put it not in full sun you make sure that there's a big tray underneath and keep filling up the bottom tray with water as well as feeding water from the top and chamomile okay um i'm don't think in the west of ireland now chamomile i did try a chamomile um uh, anybody who's familiar with my herb garden um, a chamomile lawn. I thought that sounded wonderful. I spent months of every year weeding it <laughs> be, be, from between the moss. Okay, I knew every inch of that little small square chamomile. Um, uh, so I'm not advocating that at this latitude. Um, it sounded like a nice idea. Anti inflammatory chamomile, yarrow, and echinacea, because if you've got infection, of course you'd like an anti inflammatory and anti spasmodic for that spasmodic cough. So I don't suppress it, but I soothe the, the spasms, um, uh, especially after an infection when you can get this very irritable cough. And that would be the chamomile, yarrow, and hyssop. And then the nervines I use are lavender, skullcap, chamomile, and elderflower. Um, and here's the thing. Um, they're, they're, some of you might know the Napiers, um, herbal medicine apothecaries in um, Scotland. 
and Napier's had a relaxed blend that had elderflower in it. And I thought, oh, I've never knew anything about elderflower being you know, good for relaxing or whatever. Um, and several years, but I thought, well, Duncan Napier knew what he was doing in the 1860s. So I thought, oh, well, I'm going to honor that um, accumulated knowledge and experience and wisdom. And then several years later, in an older um, herbal, uh, I actually found that the effect of elderflower on tight muscles is, is you know, I, I had one patient that came in and said that the herbs had the effect of she no longer felt like she was wearing her shoulders like ear, earrings. Like So when she came, she was like this. And after six weeks on the herbs, she was much more relaxed. And, and that tension is relieved by the effect of the um, elderflower. So in that way, it's very good for nervous system tension in that it goes. So it's not a mental nervine effect. It's like uh, the, the nervous system or the muscle system just having that sigh, okay? Um, adrenal support is licorice to the ginseng and the elderflower, either Korean or Siberian ginseng. Siberian ginseng is an adaptogen um, to help cope with long range stress and performance. Um, and the Korean ginseng is more indicated for an acute infection. So you might expect the Eleutherococcus, the, the Siberian ginseng, to be useful after an infection, and the Panax or Chinese or Korean ginseng to be useful for uh, bolstering up all your energy to really kick ass with an infection. And, and that's really what you want. You want, to, you want to get in for an infection. You want to get in before there's a full-blown um, effect on the inflammatory system. Because then you're, 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 then you're dealing with not an, a microbial infection, you're, you're dealing with an immune collapse. And that was, that's one of the problems with COVID, that the, the COVID has a more sustained um, uh, viral effect, which then you know, after day five to seven, when a flu would normally be getting better, there's a prolonged um, uh, problem um, for the immune system and the immune system goes into disarray. So... Um, you, you definitely want to get in early. Um, the yarrow and the ginger spread things out, so they have the sweating effect and the distribution of the other herbs. Um, uh, ginger, chamomile, mallow and peppermint then are used for the digestive system. You soothe the digestive system, you soothe the cough. You soothe the cough, you soothe the digestive system. Or you, you have good health in the mucous membranes of the lungs, and that mirrors good health in the mucous membranes of the digestive system, particularly the stomach. And then the anti-allergy, which is chamomile, elderflowers, plantago, and echinacea. And I, I did it this way because, first of all, to list how commonly I use the herbs, and then why I use them herbs, and then within that to show you um, uh, how so many of the herbs have multiple actions and the actions are all ones that you would like to use if you've got problems with your sinuses or your lungs. So I'm primarily dealing with your lungs today. But all of the same things apply for the sinuses, except that the sinuses are very cold. So you particularly want um, powerful and higher doses of antimicrobials. And you definitely want more circulatory herbs. And you want more, um, uh, um, more postural drainage. So, by the way, if any of you want um, a list of the herbs, of the actions, um, and uh, then all of the, the blends, you can see on the apothecary, um, <clears throat> you can look, look up um, uh, congestion, mucotone, um, the herbs, oh, the, the herbs and, and, and you can mix and match why the herbs are in that particular blend. OK, so that you can see what you're using. The, the, the teas that are very handy to have in the cupboard is the, the, the clear way um, pack. Because that has uh, plantago, thyme, Scots pine needles, um, which are very high in vitamin C, um, in bioavailable vitamin C, mallow leaf, licorice and ginger. So you, you can look at those ingredients 
and look at my lists here and go, ah, that's just the one that I need. Okay. Um, handy to have this. So this is like our, our, a traditional flu tea, viral tea, any kind of infection tea for the whole family. Um, now, uh, okay. So I said I would, um, oh, now, now I've told you what all the herbs do. So now I'll tell you what I expect patients to do. Um, and one of them, as I said, is bed rest. Now, I know if you've got three children under five that that's wishful thinking. But if you've got three children under five and you've got cousins, neighbors, mammies, daddies, anybody in your neighborhood or, or your community, you ask for help. OK, because um, this this is, is, is quite important. Um, we've all got very much into our own silos of looking after but we, uh, our kind of individual families. But I'll just, you know, beg to extend to a community. Um, uh, so bed rest as you can, certainly early to bed, lots of fluids, uh, warmth, reassurance, um, fluids. So, and I recommend the teas. I'm a great believer in the tea. And I'm a great believer in this summer, there you are all out, looking for your yarrow you're you're drying your mint drying your thyme from your gardens lots of people grow these things but then they don't think to bring them into the, the kitchen um we have denise healy here who does courses on a regular basis on how to make your own home apothecary um so if any of you are anywhere in in, in commuting distance you can check out on the website sign up for our newsletter we don't send you a million newsletters. We just send you information about upcoming um, uh, upcoming um, events. Okay. Now, I'm just checking whether you guys are chatting to me here. Uh, not that I can see. Okay. I just excuse me just taking a moment to check I would love to be chatting to you okay top chat no okay so I, I can't see chat so forgive me if some of you are sending messages in and I can't find them here okay um <clears throat> so fluids make the tea or just drink water drink water with honey and lemon um make your own onion um, syrup, there's loads of YouTubes in there, how to make onion syrup, cough medicine lasts for three months. Um, pick elderberries. Um, I would love, because we've forgotten, you know, all, all of our grandparents knew these and certainly great grandparents. Um, but we, we've all bought into the pharmacy model and I'm suggesting um, that it's, uh, not if it's another thing on top of the 10 thing that you're, things that you're already doing, I've done all the work for you. I've put all the blends together. They're there if you want them. But if you're looking to make that connection and you do have the time and the resources, I think it's wonderful. OK. Um, so, OK. Now, the other thing is uh, make the teas, take the tinctures. Tinctures are alcohol blends. Now, there's a tiny dose of, of alcohol, which helps extract some of the very bitter um, uh, um, medicines um, that would really you know, I, I wouldn't expect you to take as a tea. Um, and sometimes it's uh, just a much better extraction method. Um, the amount of alcohol is tiny. Um, but, if, you know, if, if that's an issue for you, we do have a children's blend and that's made from glycerides. There's no alcohol in it. Is that it? No, that's the imitone. Anyway, it's called Kinder Kind. Um, and you can either get it from us or various um, chemists throughout the country have them as well. Um, and health food shops, health food shops as well. Um, so uh, now the other thing that can be very useful is aromatherapy oil for the in a room diffuser. You can get if there's any children or people where it might be an accident, um, get the ones that have a very safe water-based electric diffuser. Um, otherwise, you can use the one with the candle. Don't get the cheap candles votive candles get ones made of beeswax otherwise you're getting chemicals in the air that you really don't need when you have a chest infection um inhalations of olive oil 
Um, other things that you can put in the basin of boiling water is loose chamomile tea or a few chamomile tea bags and also a teaspoon of turmeric um, and then and a few drops of olive oil and inhale. OK, inhale, inhale, blanket over your head or, or um, towel over your head. Um, very good. We also have chest um, and sinus uh, cream. And this is a friction rub. OK, and this goes, most people, a chest infection will be the lower bases of the lungs. So you take a little bit of this, rub it, and you rub it like a friction, really hard. Right, so that the underneath skin goes a little bit red um, and it feels warm. And then on top of that, put some cling film, bring your pyjamas down, and then put a, a hot water bottle or one of those heating pads. And that absorbs the antiseptic and antimicrobial um, um, essential oils across the, um, the, the skin. Um, you might have read in old herbals about the use of red flannel. And uh, I, I, when I heard this first, of course, <laughs> being the skeptic I am, um, I thought, well, that's a load of old flannel, right? <laughs> um, but it turns out that the rationale behind it is that it's slightly. Um, scratchy and irritating and it actually works as a counter irritant particularly in keeping with using some of these topical herbs so i'm not i'm not nearly as um uh willing to pass these customs over simply because nobody has done yet done the research i'll i'll believe the tradition and then wait for somebody to prove it it, it doesn't work and even then i'm looking at the research and going they didn't ask a herbalist, you know, the herb herbalists are not involved in any of this research. And there's usually a very obvious flaw for that reason. Um, the other tradition you might have heard of is, is um, people beating a, a joint that's got arthritis with nettles um, and, and causing nettle rash stings all around the joint. And then it's much better for a few days. And they did actually do a very nice piece of research on that. And it did prove that you know, this massive infusion of circulation um, takes away all of the irritants um, and people do get a measure of comfort um, even after the stings have settled. Like in the beginning, I was thinking, yeah, well, of course they don't feel the arthritic pain because they're so busy feeling the pain of the nettle stings. But it goes, the, the relief from the pain goes on significantly longer than the pain of the stings. But I haven't tried it myself yet. Thankfully, I haven't got arthritis. Um, so, uh, and I haven't found anybody courageous enough to volunteer, um, but it was a very nice, sensible piece of research. Okay, so that's the chest and sinus cream. Um, other topical things, um, for children who have chesty coughs, um, if you split garlic and rub the um, glistening oil into the, the baby or the young, young child's feet, um, then you get a significant amount in the blood. Um, how do we know that garlic is a diaphoretic that induces sweating? Because maybe people sweat and they smell of garlic. So it's, I don't need a double blind randomized control clinical trial. Um, and it's dose related. The more garlic they eat, the more they sweat and the more garlicky it smells. So there you go. That's an N equal one observational um, study. And the thing about herbal medicine is whether or not it's been proven on a big population in an experimental group um, or not, you all, all my patients and the people passing by this door want to know is, will it work for me? Um, so I can, I can say that there are many people who have experienced that these are, are good for, for them. Okay. Now, oh, the other thing I'll note is, let me just see where else we're going to. Okay, that's fine. So the next thing is you think about the uh-oh moment. Do you remember I said that it's important for all of these herbs that you introduce it in a timely fashion? And the time is uh-oh. The minute you go uh-oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to come down with A, B, or C, right? Um, we all have our, for some people it's an uh-oh, I'm going to get a migraine. For other people it's going to be uh-oh, I'm you know in trouble with my bowels, uh-oh. But if you're if you're up the chesty um, motorway, 
okay, that's where your immune system goes for your 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 when your resources are low, that's what's affected. So when you go, uh oh, and you know you're in for um, an upper respiratory tra tract infection, a lower respiratory tract infection, a sore throat, um, or a flare up of your sinuses, that's when you start taking the herbs. That's when you start taking the vitamin C. And you update your vitamin D, by the way. Um, I, I suggest that people take vitamin D on an ongoing basis. Um, one to, uh, generally 2,000 units a day, and especially through the winter, and especially if there's a family history of multiple sclerosis, which is um, common in Ireland, or less rare than it is in other places. So the uh oh moment is, um, I can remember having it once in Galway Airport, um, when they were doing building works and my feet, there was a wind rushing around my feet and they got stone cold, um, like nothing. But I ended up going and sitting in, sitting on the loo, in the loo, just to get my feet off the ground. But they were perished. So if at any time you feel that you're cold to the bone and perished and you go, oh, oh I know what's going to happen. Because I was in there going, oh, oh, and I was on my way somewhere with no herbs with me. And here's another thing. I always make sure that there's 100 mils of whatever ails. I do tend to be chesty. And the herbs have worked for me big time. I was going down a road of um, antibiotics once every couple of years. And then it was with steroids and then it was with inhalers. And I was going, oh, I don't like this at all. So since I've used the herbs in about 23 years, twice I've taken to the bed in the last 10 years. Um, uh, and you know, done everything that I've told you. Okay, I have the mucotone at home, the vitamin C. I, if I get that oh, oh moment at four o'clock in the morning, I'm out of bed, downstairs, swallowing back the the mucotone. Um, the clear away tea, the uh, extra elderflower berries. I find the bel berries very very helpful for me, um, and very good research on antiviral effects. Um, Nigella seeds. I take nigella seeds every day with my porridge. These are um, or oil for, for people who don't like the taste or who just prefer an oil. And this is recommended by a lot of the um, doctors who have done as much, looked at as much research as available for preventing viral infection, particularly relevant. I mean, it was kind of focused on because of COVID, but it's not specific to it. Um, so this is the uh, cold pressed nigella seed oil. So um, highly recommended. Um, so the uh oh moment, action stations, right? Vitamin C, for me, it's the mucotone. For people who get sinuses, it's probably the congestion. Um, vitamin C, lots of fluids, go to bed, okay? Um, if I get in the uh oh, it, if I don't do something, it might happen and I start taking all of these the next couple of days, most of the time, it doesn't go any further. If it does go any further, and I feel this going down into my bronchi, that's it, I'm in bed. All your appointments are cancelled. Everything stops, okay? Um, so start the minute you recognize your own signal. Oh yeah, this is important as well, because your signal is very specific to you. For me, I get an itch in my soft palate. That's yeah, not, not quite right. And sneezing. Other people get a sore throat. Other people get a runny nose. Some people get just a generalized shiver. Um, some people get the kind of cold that they can't warm up from. Um, and they, they also know that they're a bit um, run down. Uh, some people get they, they lose their appetite, um, sneezing and runny nose. Okay. And then, you know, you're you're going, oh, well, why am I, there's five out of 100 people in the office who are going to get, or even 10 out of 100 people in the office who are going to get this. Why me? Why now? So that's when you do an inventory of what have you been doing? What have you been exposed to? Um, how has your, your shopping and chopping, right? Shopping, chopping and eating whole food cooked at home. How has that been going? Um, late nights um, and, and commuting. Is a, is a very highly stressful thing that a lot of people have to do at the moment. Um, so commuting, um, parents, vulnerable children, having learning disabilities and all kinds of things, um, uh, reasons for people to stress. So you, you do as much as you can to calm everything down. Um, 
uh, and get help if you if if it's available and if you need it. Okay. So I've just put down evaluate and prioritize. Red flags. Okay. So it, it, her, herbal medicine has limitations. Every kind of medicine has limitations. I would say that herbal medicine started early um, and, uh, and and given a chance. In, in other words, you're not going to bed late. You're not, not, not taking fluids. You're not supporting yourself. Um, would probably help 60 to 80% of all kind of infections that threaten people's health in a significant way if left uncared for. Um, uh, but you need to care for it. Um, and uh, But that, that leaves a significant number that do progress and that might need antibiotics. And you want to make sure that you're not running out of breath, um, going, going to the loo in the ensuite bathroom when you get back to bed and you're absolutely wiped. You know, that's not usual. Um, when you're short of breath going up and down the stairs to an extent that you're you're really not functioning very well. When you find it hard to keep up a conversation with somebody because you just don't feel well enough. And, and I'm, you know, I mean, just it, it, when you feel that sick, it can be hard to know how sick you are. But so if those things are happening to you, obviously, if you cough up blood, obviously, if you have severe chest pain, um, it can mean that you're getting pleurisy. Um, so have a high index of suspicion for needing to have the doctor check it out for you. Um, this isn't uh, nothing that I do is, um, is 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 claiming that any form of medicine is exclusive or superior or that it all has to work to be the right medicine at the right time for the right person. Um, uh, also persisting symptoms. If you have a hoarseness of, of your breath, you know, for, for three weeks and it's going on for four and the next thing you think, gosh, it's, you know, a month and a half since everybody is saying, have you got a cold? You, you need to get that checked out. To You need somebody to actually go and have a look at your vocal cords and make sure that they're okay. Um, or if you have a, a significant cough for more than three to four weeks, it used to be six weeks, but the guidelines are now three weeks um, for a persistent cough. And I'm thinking, I don't think they've been written by a GP because if we sent everybody with a cough for three to four weeks up to the rapid access clinic, um, even if they're smokers, that they'd be, you know, these guidelines are often written by people in ivory towers who don't have community experience. Um, but certainly a cough, you're, you're getting a little bit concerned and you're certainly having it checked out after three weeks and referred if it's persisting for more than six weeks. Um, and obviously, just in case I forget to mention it, um, I'm just going to say it, give up smoking. <laughs> Do yourself a favour. I know it's difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, for anybody, just a heads up, that is the biggest um, effect that you can have on your health um, is to, um, to, to give up smoking. But I, I say that having, you know, I, I struggled, gave them up for 20 years, took them up again. How silly was that? It took me several, you know, I know how, how difficult it is. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not good advice. Um, and please heed it if you can. Um, I'll just say one other thing. Um, uh, when I first started doing herbal medicine and I... You know, somebody in the know would, would talk me through these herbs and the effects that they have. And, you know, the echinacea is good for the immune system. It's an alterative. It, it's antiviral. And the mallow is is good for this and good for three different things. I'm going, that? You can't have that. That's, that just doesn't make sense. Um, and, and I thought I'd just mention that, I, I've mentioned it earlier, is, is that you can take you can take the fact that any any one of the herbs, this is, uh, I've mentioned that one already, so I'll just take another one just to be different. This is the mucotone. Okay, so there's, so what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine herbs in here. Each one of these herbs has 300, 300 plus um, constituents. Most of them are fairly neutral. Some of them are nourishing because they come from green green um, leaves or stems or roots, or then all of which have nourishment. Some of them have active ingredients. Some of them have neutral ingredients. They're, they're fairly inert. Others might have um, uh, uh, an effect that neutralizes a harmful effect. So you might have something that's harmful and something that's neutralizing. Um, 
whether and what we know about the herb is what's been observed over 4,000 years, right? And there's, there's 11 of them, and they're accumulative, right? So the, eight of those herbs might have flavonoids in them. So you're going to have eight times the flavonoids, and, and the flavonoids themselves are a whole, um, a whole family of flavones, flavonoids, and all the rest of it. I won't bore you with the chemistry. Um, so by the time you add up all those cumulative, additive, and synergistic, which is more than additive, effects, even of one of those constituents, you can see how they might have an effect on a whole range of actions. And what really sold me on the herbal medicine in the beginning, before my patients actually taught me how well they worked, um, what sold it, it on the, is me to them was the physiological effects, that it, it doesn't act according to disease pathology, it acts according to physiological normality, right? How do you get to restore physiological function, right? Which, in other words, is called healing, you know? So um, for, the, for the scientists among you um, and the, 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 the skeptics from a science point of view, um, you, you have no reason to worry because these 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 can be justified entirely on physiological um, grounds, and then you go into the whole um, point of whether this is um, sustainable medicine. You know, these herbs are mainly grow on marginal land. Um, uh, they it takes a lot of labor um, to to um, harvest them. You you can't go in with a big machine. You know, it's all in small scrubby areas and bog and various things so it takes a lot to um of meaningful work um but it it's it, it could be a community effort um <clears throat> uh, it's regenerative in that it restores people's normal function um and regenerative in terms of it then returns natural substances as opposed to drugs if i take paracetamol I'm eliminating paracetamol or their metabolites, which are not normal com compounds, even if they're just neutral in the rivers and the soils and whatever. Um, so I would say that there's an argument from the point of view of uh, regeneration. If that's what you're into, you know, if you just want something that works, works to um, sustain you and keep you going out night clubbing and whatever, that's your choice. You know, I don't recommend it because you'll run out of steam. You'll run out of road eventually um, in terms of your immune system. So and there's the other point, which is that our symptoms are there to get us to ask the question, why me and why now? Um, because uh, the the imbalance needs to be redressed, not just in terms of dealing with the infection, but why you got it in the first place. Usually it comes back to am I going to bed on time? Am I sleeping at a, a you know, reasonable peace? Um, am I eating good food? Um, and mm, how am I doing along with life's purpose? Right? Because so that that that's kind of like how I am in the world. Am I fighting everybody? Am I pushing people away? Am I drawing people to me? Um, am I coping with too many responsibilities? So these are all things that we take into account. Um, hopefully you won't need to see a herbalist because you will be doing all of this thing, these things to support yourself. Um, but we are here if you need us. Um, I myself and my colleague Lara do online consultations. So if that's a that's made a big difference to accessibility, we would much rather see you in person. Um, but it means that people can come um, in person every two or three appointments, if you know what I mean. So it does make it a lot more manageable. Besides, who needs a reason to come and visit Galway, um, apart from, from uh, getting the help that you might need? Um, so just so Tara isn't here with me today, she usually assists me with all the administration and she'd be wagging her finger at me saying, don't forget to let them know about Instagram and Facebook and um, events that we hold. We, yes, we have a, currently have a colleague who's doing um, a four-week workshop on how to... Um, make an apothecary in your own kitchen, you know, and we've mentioned some of the herbs, the oregano, this, the, the thyme, sage is another one, ginger, um, turmeric, these are all things, how to use them, um, making an onion syrup, uh, all of these things so that you've got um, things that are accessible when you need them. That's the trick, early and when you need them, okay? Um, now, 
think that she's left me. Uh, so we've talked about the carrageen, we've talked about the chest blend, we've talked about the mucotone, chesty, cough, the nigella seeds, and the nigella oil. Uh, local honey, I'm a great promoter of local honey, um, uh, where the bees feed on the hedgerows that have thyroid and uh, have um, not thyroid, uh, thyme, um, etc. Uh, this is the mullein, which people are finding very good as a tea. It's a soothing um, mus mucus um, membrane supportive tea. We have all of the herbs we have as individual herbs. We have them as blends and we have them as the tea, three teaspoon tea sachets. Okay, so each one of those. So this, this is a 14 day supply, but it's 42 tea bags equivalent. So um, that kind of helps people. And we have the Boost Tea, um, Clear Way Tea, and React Tea, which is for allergies. I mentioned that just as we're coming up to hay fever season. Um, and I'll put in a plug. Hay fever, you want to use these teas for uh, um, from now if you start getting your hay fever symptoms between Easter and July. So these are two build up your mucous membrane barriers, all right? And don't forget to breathe through your nose. Very important. We've talked about the, I think I've done everything. We've talked about the imitone, which is when you know your immune system is low or you're recovering from an infection and you're going, oh, I, I'm, I better just be a little bit gentle with myself. And then the congestion is more for sinuses. So I hope that way of approaching what herbs are used, which are the ones more frequent, what are the actions that you would need? You can fill in other herbs. I mentioned the inula. Um, there's um, a bitter whorehound. Um, very, very good for people with very um, stuck, stubborn phlegm along with the thyme. So um, uh, any of these herbs are available loose as individual teas. The tinctures are available loose as individual teas, as individual tinctures. Make your own blends. I'm thrilled for people to do that. Anything that it brings us closer to um, looking after ourselves. Um, I, I describe doing herbal medicine or seeing a medical herbalist as doing a diploma in your own health, okay, and that of your family. I, I always treat people, we always treat people as part of their family group, okay. So, um, I'm, oh gosh, do you know, I think this, there's, there's something here. I'll close this. Oh God, I've just found your chats. Oh, I have to read them now. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, why is there such a surge in pneumonia in the hospitals? Um, uh, I, I think a lot of the, with the overwhelm of the COVID-19, a lot of the other viruses were, were held back. They were kind of like, oh, no room for me here, no room at the inn. Um, and <clears throat> people found the, the, people were very isolated during the COVID. They weren't getting their usual little infections that kept their immune system tuned in. These are all ideas. Um, and then there was all the stress of coming out of COVID. I don't know about you, but I could have stayed in COVID uh, indefinitely. Coming out was much more difficult for me. Everybody's different. Um, uh, the children weren't at school, so they're, they're now being exposed to a lot, coping with a lot more and spreading it around the community. Um, like three three years worth in a short space of time. Um, I think it's been a very stressful time for, for people. So I think there, there are a couple of ideas, um, but we, we don't know. So my ideas are as good as anybody's. I've been growing yarrow, plantago, and a few others. Fantastic. Um, uh, oh, yeah, harvesting herbs. Um, the, I just look for somewhere. I know my own neighborhood. Um, I know where the land is so poor, nobody is going to waste any money spraying on it. Um, I've observed it over several years. Um, if I'm in a park, like if I'm in St. Anne's Park in Booterstown, I'll be going in behind the hedgerow herbs and where the dogs haven't pooped, um, uh, in little hidden corners, kind of in, inaccessible, and I'll find herbs in there. I'll find herbs on trees. Um, Regarding, you know, oh, a rat might have pissed on something. That's nothing compared to. Sorry, no. um, that's nothing compared to uh, the chemicals that are 
exposed in what's in your shops. Um, uh, and you can always wash them and then you pour boiling water over them and I don't worry about it. Um, okay, so going, so uh, that's great, Deborah. Um, uh, a few of us have been using turmeric, cayenne, honey in warm water each day, feeling brighter. Yeah, throw a few nigella seeds in there as well. Um, and warm water, very, very nice. Uh, lovely combination. Oh, Tara, you've been looking after all this already. Thanks a million. So is there anything more? Anything? No, 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 I think that's everybody. Thanks for your feedback, guys. Um, so I'll end now and thank you for your attention for this length of time. I know your time is precious and I hope it's been helpful to you. Um, sign up to our newsletters for foraging walks, herb walks, courses. Um, we, we don't send any promotional mail. Keep in touch with us on Facebook. If you just go in Dr. Claire Apothecary um, and, oh yes, do send to support at drclaire.net if you would like my notes and lists, okay? Um, and suggestions and, and we'll send them out to you, no problem. Okay, bye now.